So this last um, 12 month period has been particularly challenging, especially the last three months. And you can see that effect in our distributable income per share that is reduced on a 12 month basis by 15.2% down to the 128 cents per share. And the real big drivers there is the, um, the, the discounts and deferments, the accommodation, the plans that we've been providing for our tenants. Our net asset value, we've also been forward looking and we've been very realistic in reducing the values of, of, our, of our assets based on what we see coming forward. And that has meant that um, our realistic starting point has been lowered. And so our net asset value has reduced down to the 15 Rand and 30 cents level. On the acquisition side, we made one acquisition in the US earlier this, this year. On the disposal side, there was the one office that we, we still needed to transfer through to Inani. Importantly, our entire stake in Goz has now been fully disposed of. And so we are exclusively invested in our offshore operations um, into the United States. If I look at our asset allocation, 12.5% of our total assets are now invested offshore and just less than 25% of our total exposure um, is, is to the office sector. Operationally, um, some excellent numbers still coming through. Why? Because we've got a great team that continues to work really hard, but also because we continue to invest into our buildings. And so our vacancies have kicked up slightly to a very low 4.1%. You can see our focus on our retaining our tenants is key for us. That's an 80% tenant retention rate and then very importantly just to quantify the level of the COVID um, discounts and deferrals that we've granted through to over 1,100 of our tenants predominantly on the smaller guys um, totaling up to close to 119 million rand of, of EMEA sharing the burden with their tenants. From a balance sheet perspective our loan to value ratio is a little bit higher than what we anticipated that's now sitting at 43% a big driver in that is the mark to market of our derivative liabilities where our interest rate hedges um, with the falling interest rates our interest rate hedges are costing us a bit more in terms of that servicing so so if it wasn't for that that would have been a sub 40 percent number which was important for us but still 43 percent against a 50 percent loan to covenant uh, loan to value covenant gives us plenty of room our interest cover ratio still a very healthy three times and then if you look at it from a dividend per share side, so we are paying out a reduced dividend of 104.36 cents for the 12 month period to, to June of 2020. What does that mean? It has meant that our second half dividend is a reduced amount of 30.26 cents. Why? Because we've, we've taken a portion of our distributable income and we've left it there in the US <coughs> in order to um, preserve the cash buffer that we've got We've taken, we haven't um, <coughs> taken any dividends from certain uh, um, uh, South African income flows that we, we will we <coughs> only distribute in terms of um, the dividend, the, the cash portion of the dividends. And um, so really, I, I don't think our dividend policy has changed, but because our balance sheet is strong, because we can foresee what our future liquidity and solvency requirements <coughs> look like, we are only paying out that portion of cash backed distributable income that we see being appropriate and that's why we're paying out the 30.26 cents for the second half of this, this financial year. We also saw uh, with the retail that the constraint on the consumer spending even increased over that last three months of our financial year. We also some, saw some changes in consumer behavior. Now most of the businesses in the commercial side um, elected to work from home. Um, and we actually see that still, that there's a combination between working from home and coming back to offices. In the industrial side, we actually saw some changes in supply chains um, that benefited most of our tenants. When lockdown was announced, it was extremely important for Amira uh, to make sure that we immediately uh, implement all the hygiene and safety measurements. We immediately communicated to our tenants to her that they can understand the regulations and how it could impact them on a property level. We also, as Jeff and Greg mentioned earlier, we wanted them to know from the, uh, the get-go that we will share the burden and we provided them the, the rental connect, uh, concessions. 
Our focus was on the tenants that were hardest hit, and it was across all sectors, not only retail. And um, the number of tenants that we provided relief was 1,153. We focused on SMMEs, and 91% of those tenants that we assisted was in the SMME bracket. As you can understand, our collections was in the pressure uh, because tenants mostly for April and May did not, um, uh, was not at, or did actually not trade. Um, and we saw an increase in our, uh, in our arrears of approximately 9%. The other very important was to pay our service providers despite the interruption of services as they couldn't get to our properties. And then on top of that, Broll took over 60 properties that was previously managed by Eris. That in itself brought its challenges and then from the 1st of April or just before the 1st of April also the lockdown. To reconfirm the 4.1% um, a very proper number for year end and that was despite the effect of COVID-19 on the fourth uh, quarter um, and specifically there it was a slower take up of space because our prospective tenants couldn't uh, go to our site to go and look at our vacant unit as well as uh, we find that prospective tenants are also not sure about financial stability going forward um, but I think what was important is that we didn't lose a significant number of tenants due to COVID-19. The tenants that we did lose by year end was already in uh, financial trouble uh, before um, April. On our vacancies and uh, offices, we are we did increase to 6.9%, but still way below the average of Sapoa of 12.3%. On urban retail, also increased to 3.8%, but once again lower than Sapoa average of 4.8%. And then on the industrial side, that was reduced mainly due to the let at Denver. Denver is the warehouse that we modernized over the past uh, 12 months. Um, and that is now fully let, just over 9,700. I think very important, um, as we said uh, earlier, is that Emira's emphasis is to retain their tenants. And this also assists us to keep our vacancies low. Um, we feel that part of our success to uh, keep our tenants are firstly, uh, we provide great real estate. Our buildings and our properties are well maintained and we continue to invest in the portfolio, either by refurbishment or whatever it requires, because we believe that it needs to be relevant for the specific nodes. This um, uh, slide provides the 10 major lease expiries for financial year 20, Pleased to inform you that we've let, uh, renewed nine of the ten. Just want to highlight Net Florist. They consolidated um, to Midrand. I also mentioned this in the February results. Um, and I think very important, it was three units that they vacated. The biggest unit over 1,800 square meters, a lease was signed by both parties. Um, the second unit of 1,500, the lease at the moment is with the tenant for signature which only leaves us with an, a unit, the smallest unit of a thousand square meters. Rent reversions, I've been saying that for quite some time, is definitely um, under pressure. Um, uh, so our result was a negative 5.1%. Um, as you are aware, our previous contractual um, escalations um, a year ago was an average of 7.5%. If you compare that to economic, low economic growth, I mean, it is really, it's uh, under pressure to, to, at the end, achieve positive rent reversions. We also, what is important for us, we want to retain tenants. And we want to let space because at the end, it's important for us that that long-term sustainability of the fund is met. Our lease expiry profile, still very happy with the um, spread. Just note year 4 plus 36.6%. And financial year 21, the expiries is 26.8%. But this slide provides you 28% of that 26% is these tenants listed. You can see the status as per the slides. And as you can see, those where we're finalizing these terms is more than three years. For transparency, I would like to highlight firstly Santam. Uh, although we are busy with negotiations for five years, um, 
they are busy with a space uh, exercise uh, to also understand the space requirements. There is um, a call center unit of about 1,000 square meters in um, that building. So we know that that is at risk and it might be that they will uh, give us some space back. SA Forestry, they renewed for three months. The reason for the short-term uh, lease is that they, they were informed they have to do attend the process and the submission date is um, the middle of September. Internet Solutions, they renewed only 753 square meters, uh, two years and four months. The balance was a short-term lease of two months and the reason for that, they're consolidating their operation in Westworld in Durban. Our whale is slightly down at 2.7 years and our contractual escalations a year ago, as I said earlier, 7.5% that reduced to 7.3%. The main contributor, renewals um, in the urban retail sector. We do see that contractual escalations will be under pressure um, and it's been under pressure mostly from national retailers. Now we actually see that it's under pressure from all sectors. The effect of cons uh, customers being under strain can definitely be seen in retail sales. We also see that there are changes in shopping behavior. Customers are still concerned about visiting shopping centers. Also, social distancing have an effect. And all of these contributed to lower footfalls. But we do see that when people visit um, shopping centers, the spend per visit is higher. To give you an update on uh, Edcon, just to remind you our exposure six leases and all six of those stores were classified as better performance stores. Edcon's at Bonner Park will be ceded to retailability. Four of the five jet stores, we will sign leases with the Pashini Group. We did elect to take one of the stores back at Tramshed because we, um, because we had a better um, offer from another tenant. Very important to mirror over the past few years is in, to be environmental responsible. Um, and all our initiatives are aligned not only with the country, but also with what retail uh, rent, uh, tenants um, require. We also believe that these projects improve the resilience of their mirror portfolio. But let me just mention a few that we're busy with. Um, or what we did over the past financial year. Firstly, six PV farms now completed, and this week we will commission two additional PV farms, one at Springfield and the other at Market Square. At Water, uh, 16 projects were completed over the past financial year. That included not only water um, efficiency, but also rain and groundwater harvesting. The savings equal to 51 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Then we also submitted our Biodiversity Performance Declaration, and we are very pleased with the score that we received of 10.5, compared to a sector average of only 0.4. So just to remind you of our portfolio, 79 properties um, spread over commercial, industrial, retail, and residential value of 10.2 billion with the average value of 128 million. Now I'm sure you all are aware that our current um, operating environment definitely very unusual. You just saw what we had to go through when Wi-Fi didn't want to work. It's fluid and it's changing constantly. We do believe that businesses in the next 6 to 12 months will reconsider um, the, the space requirements and how they are going to do business, but also note that they are under strain um, from a financial perspective. We do believe that letting a vacant space uh, could, could be different. Um, even the way uh, we do business, our rental growth will be under pressure, escalations will be under pressure, and even the lease terms. We still find that utility supply is also under pressure, not only ESCA, but also water. And therefore, we will accelerate um, those uh, projects that we require at our properties. 
On the retail side, we believe that there will be increased e-commerce activity. Um, and the uh, commercial side, we strongly believe that there will still be human interaction. That remains part of, of our everyday life. That is where we um, collaborate. That's where um, we need to discuss in any issues. That is where we connect, we socialize. But we do think that there will be a different workplace and those models we are at the moment exploring. So going forward, tenant retention is still our main focus. Letting strategies where necessary, we will change and where necessary also tenant incentives. I think financial or we think financial year 21 will remain in stormy waters. But the MIRA team will continue to provide stability. We will continue to provide support, not only to our tenants, but also to our service providers, and most important, to our property managers.